Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great, hopefully great, uh, Smart Bear webinar. Um, we're hosting this webinar from our Galway office, where it's a little bit rainy, um, but par for the course here in the west of Ireland. Um, so joining me on this webinar is Lorna Smith, a fellow SE, uh, that's sales engineer for those not in the know. Um, and we're going to be presenting on the power of automated testing and test management. Yes, thank you very much, Jeremy, for that quick introduction. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our attendees. I see we've quite a few now who have joined, so I think we're almost ready to kick off. Um, what's always interesting to ask when we start one of these webinars is where you're all joining from. So if you want to just pop uh, where you're coming from in the chat, that would be great. Also, during the session, if you have any questions, we'd like you to put them in the Q&A box as opposed to the chat box. So if you put them in the Q&A, we just have a better ability to track them. And if we don't get to answer your question live, we can then follow up afterwards. Okay, so I'm just looking at the chat. We've quite a few. We've South Africa, Australia, Germany, Slovenia, the UK, India, Sydney, wow, Vietnam, Spain, <laughs> Ireland. Okay, so we've a really, really good diverse group of people here. That's a great, great start. Thanks all for doing that. Okay, I think without further ado, we'll go ahead with our presentation. So as Dermot introduced, my name is Lorna Smith. I am a sales engineer in Smartware. So we do technical product demonstrations for our customers. And this is my lovely colleague here, Dermot, on the right. Hello. And um, I just assume, can everyone see my screen? Can somebody just put in the chat to confirm that you can see these these wonderful pictures. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks everyone. Okay, so I think a lot of you are familiar with who SmartBear are, but we may have one or two new users or new potential customers. So just to give you some background on who we are as a company, we are a software company. We have a global presence. So we have offices in the US, India, Australia, and in mainland Europe. We were founded in 2009 and we currently have over six and a half million users and those users are users for both our paid for products and also our open source products. So believe it or not, SmartBear is actually the company behind Swagger and Soap UI. So you might be using these products already. So we do have a huge community out there and we love that community because we all help each other in overcoming the, the challenges that we all face on a daily basis with our technology. So I'll just jump ahead here. And again, in case you're unaware, or in case you are new to Swiper, just want to give you a quick overview of our product suite. So here we have it broken down into UI and API. So our tools cater for both the front end and the back end. So for example, oh, excuse that annotation. Across the top here, we have Collaborator for code review. You can then do your front-end automated UI testing with test left and test complete. And then if you want to do your testing across various browsers, versions, and operating systems, you can work with our cross-browser testing tool. At the bottom here then, you have our API tools. So these are broken up into designing and developing your APIs using Swagger Hub. If you want to virtualize your APIs, you can do so with Service V Pro. And then SOAP UI Pro is our automated API functional testing tool. Finally, if you want to do any of your load tests, you can also use Load UI Pro. So the great thing is that all of these tools work together in some form or another. For example, you can have your front end UI tests in Test Complete. You can create your back end API tests in SOAP UI Pro. And then you can run them from test complete and have the results of both your front end and your back end in one central location. In the center here as well, not to forget, we also have Zephyr for Jira and Zephyr Enterprise, which we're going to be showing a little bit of today. So these are test case management tools. One is a plugin, which is inside Jira. And the other, Zephyr Enterprise, is a standalone version, which has a bi-directional relationship with Jira. So you have 
live updates. It works really, really well with Jira um, and really, really popular with our customer base. And then last but not least, our hip test. So this is for all those BDD users out there or testers who are taking the behavioral driven development approach. So we have hip test to do that. And we also have our other tools that work and support those BDD tests. So if you have them created, you can also run them using test complete, for example. Okay, and then the other point on this slide is our integration. So if you are a SmartBear user, you likely know that we are mad about integrations. We're constantly updating our tools to integrate with everything that you're using. SmartBear are not trying to disrupt your technology stack. We just want to work well with what you already have. It's a hard enough world out there at the moment. We're not trying to make it any more difficult for you. So if you have any specific integrations that you're ever curious about, please you know, get in touch and there's a good chance we're going to have some kind of a work or a way to work with those tools. Okay, thank you for your attention for that. So let's just jump into the agenda for today. So we're just going to focus on how you can maximize Zephyr for Jira, its continuous testing features. We're then gonna look at how you can automate your test cases at both the UI and the API level. And that's going to include a demonstration. So we're going to actually jump into some of our tools today on the call. And then we're gonna show you how you can link your automated test results from Test Complete into Zephyr for Jira. And of course, we'll have time for a question and answer at the end because I'm sure we, we will have a few from, from our audience today. Okay, so we're going to start now with just a test management overview. Again, we're trying to cater for all levels of attendees on the call. We know we will have from beginners to experts. So just a background, test management is the process by which software teams plan, develop, execute and report on all their testing activities across the SDLC, the software development lifecycle. So this flow would be familiar to a lot of you, but for those who are maybe newer in the space, this is the typical process and approach people take. So they plan, they develop, they execute, and they report. Some of the benefits of test management solutions is the ability to improve efficiency across your testing. Again, saving time, massive, massive benefit. The ability to find bugs and defects quicker when you have organized test cases and your test management is on point, you will undoubtedly find your defects and bugs quicker. You will improve productivity across your teams. You will enhance traceability. Again, really, really key. Historically, we haven't really done well with traceability in software testing, so really, really good benefit of having your test management solution. Real-time insights, so like I said, our tool, for example, Zephyr has real-time reporting based on the execution of your test cases, how many defects are being logged, all of the various requirements that are associated to those defects. So again, just having those real-time insights is key. Another benefit is the increased collaboration across team. Again, having a central location where all members of your team can dip in and dip out and see what tests are where, and you will have them well organized in your test management solution. And last but not least, the integration with automation and CI CD tools. So having a test management solution will allow you to better integrate because typically a test management solution is built to work with your CI CD suite. Okay, so then just to look at continuous testing, I'm gonna hand you over to Dermot for this lovely slide here. So <laughs> can you tell us a bit more about this slide? I'd love to. Okay, <laughs> so um, the reason I'm taking this slide is I, I have some background in continuous testing in the industry. So um, in continuous testing and continuous integration and deployment. So what we're seeing here obviously is a depiction of kind of a flow between the idea of manual testing and as we move towards more of a kind of a DevOps, uh, automated DevOps approach to testing, integrating testing into an end-to-end -end pipeline when you're building your, your um, uh, project from your source code management and then you're building your tests, you're running your tests, the tests inform the next step of the pipeline. So um, obviously when we're starting out on this journey, quite often a, a customer or a, a team will start out with the intention to move to Agile, 
from waterfall i've seen this a lot talking to customers and in my own experience where um people just decide that agile suits their development process that much better so they move to that and with agile comes kind of hand in hand this need to automate the tests in order to keep up with the increased speed of um of development so when you reduce your cycles from months down to a matter of weeks you need to be able to ex execute your tests in a very timely manner in order to make those maybe two weeks uh, cycles and that's where automation comes in so with an automated test you know that you're going to be able to repeat your tests in a reliable fashion but you're also going to be able to schedule them and you're going to be able to in most cases execute them in a much shorter fashion than if you were manually testing so that's where Zephyr for Jira comes in um, a lot of agile teams kind of according to our surveys anyway of the industry jira is huge when it comes to managing uh, teams and managing tasks and zephyr for jira obviously just plugs right into that and it just gives you this capability of creating specifying tests and uh, grouping tests and scheduling tests so that moves on to the automation side of things now zephyr for jira includes um or has an optional API that you can enable, where as well as sending tasks to JIRA through JIRA's API, you can also um, update the status of tests that you've created with Zephyr for JIRA. So you're, you can add that automation level uh, into your tests so that they're automatically updating your test status. Um, and there's um, the capability to monitor what's going on with Zephyr for JIRA as well, and use that to inform how the tests are executed. So it also offers you know, traceability, reporting, um, dashboards, um, and for all of these products, obviously, we have uh, a significant level of support for our customers. Then we move into kind of the DevOps um, uh, section of this graph where we're talking about automating uh, most, if not all, of the stages of our software development lifestyle life cycle lifestyle <laughs> um it is a lifestyle, <laughs> it is a lifestyle. <laughs> living the, the dream. life <laughs> exactly but um when we're moving into full devops uh zephyr standalone is probably the more favorable product there because it has uh all of the capabilities of zephyr for jira but additional analytics and it also has the uh, vortex um plugin which allows you to um automatically connect to your test systems, automatically kick off tests directly from your Zephyr instance. So that's basically where our offerings, our Zephyr offerings fit into this kind of flow from manual testing all the way through to automated testing and DevOps and CI CD. Cool. Nice one, Dermot. Very, very thorough. I like oh, thank that. You. Thank you. <laughs> So it might be an idea to have a, a poll at this point. Yeah, um, let me go ahead and launch our first poll. So launch polling. Okay, so the question is, are you currently doing UI or API test automation? So the answer is, hopefully you can see. Can anyone, is anyone getting the poll? Doesn't look like it. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, you're getting it. I'm just not seeing the results. Oh, they're starting to come in now. Awesome. Okay, so Dermot, I've just learned something. Yes, this so is actually, I... This has launched all three polls at once. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we're having a question time at the moment. So if you could be so kind as to just take a moment to read those. So the first question is, are you currently doing UI or API test automation? Yes, I'm an expert. Yes, I'm just getting started. No, I'm looking to get started or no. So we've got some answers coming in for that one. Thank you very much. So if you could just take a moment to read that, I'll give you some peace for a second. Absolutely. I guess that's a learning for us, Jeremy, in the future. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> we just incorporated some new tools for webinars, so we're still kind of learning the way, but at least we have the questions. So. <laughs> exactly, yeah, could be a lot worse. So I'm just looking in at the answers here to which products would you like to learn more about? So 
some really good feedback on Zephyr for Jira, Ready API, Zephyr Standalone. So just good to see that. And then what else? What tools are you currently using for test management? We have about 69% saying Jira. 24% um, of you are already using Zephyr, which is brilliant to hear. Um, someone's just put in the chat, automated tests for the polls needed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Good point, Dale. Yeah. And then I think we have 31% using spreadsheets and Word documents. So this, this would probably be the most useful for that group of people, this presentation, just to show you what the possibility of having a good test management solution can bring. Okay, so I think everyone has made a good attempt to answer the questions now. Um, we okay. have 90, yeah, so I'm gonna end it now. So thank you very much for that. Apologies again about the, the three questions at once a bit much, but we appreciate you taking the time. So I'm gonna end that right. poll. We might relaunch it later on in case anybody missed it. Um, Oh, I just realized it was the poll on my screen that I was sharing so everyone can see. <laughs> there you go. I couldn't see it. Oh, right. Okay, another learning. <laughs> Indeed. Now, I've noticed as well, uh, one attendee has raised their hand. If I would say that if you have a question, definitely put it in the Q&A section. Um, it's just a Q&A link in your Zoom interface there. Um, so, that's better than raising a hand, which we can't respond to, or um, uh, raising a question in the chat, which is hard to keep track of because there's so much traffic in the chat box, okay? So as for being able to see the poll, uh, there should be a poll button in your interface, which um, uh, we've kind of closed it down now, but um, we will open it again in a while and uh, you'll be able to vote then. Um, if it doesn't pop up a window, then it should be, the poll button should flash for you to indicate that there's poll information coming. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks, Jeremy. So I think we're going to jump now into a bit of test automation. Um, lovely. Would you like to speak to this lovely triangular trade-off? absolutely would. <laughs> this is the iron triangle, which is a very dramatic title for something... Um, uh, so small and so simple and straightforward, but basically the idea is that um, the iron triangle gives us a representation of the three major factors um, uh, where uh, testing and particularly automated testing uh, come into play in an enterprise. So the first at the bottom there being cost, the second one being time, and the third one being quality. So changing the quantity of any one of these is necessarily going to have an impact on either of the other two. So you end up uh, changing the shape of the triangle um, depending on what your requirements are. So for example, if you've got very minimal cost, then that's necessarily going to affect your quality and your time. If you've got a short time scale in which to deliver your tests or execute your tests, that's going to necessarily impact your quality and your cost and so on. So as it says on the screen, this is where test automation can help. So instead of um, utilizing uh, manual testers where your time is going to be impacted, potentially your cost is going to be impacted, and also you run the risk of uh, tests not being repeated exactly the same or tests being executed by different people being executed in different ways with automation, it's going to be executed in exactly the same way every single time you run it, no matter how many you run at a, a given time um, and on however many systems you're using. So that moves us on to the testing pyramid. We've moved from triangles to pyramids now, so. <laughs> We're covering all of the shapes. Exactly. We're expanding in dimensionali dimensionality. Um, so what we see here, obviously, is unit tests at the bottom, and the reason they're at the bottom on a broader base is because unit tests are generally uh, more easily automated um, because you're dealing with a, a smaller segment of your code and you're dealing 
it's being created by the person who has created the code. So they have a, a very deep understanding and can rapidly come up to speed with a, a unit test for a given unit. Then you have API testing, a little bit more complex, a uh, little bit more system oriented. Um, so that can make that a little bit more complicated to implement, but still, you know, within the realms of possibility, um, it's usually the first kind of system test that people tend to automate when they're uh, automating a, a front end and back end software system. And then at the top, you've got the UI layer, um, which is absolutely automatable, but often it's a more complex system that needs to be automated. So uh, built into the UI testing, you also have this idea of subjective testing, which requires a person to interact with it. That's the sort of thing that can't easily be automated or maybe it, for a given software application, it can't be automated at all. So you have to retain a certain level of manual testing. But for everything else where it's finite, everything else where the testable quantities are uh, easily discernible, then you can absolutely automate that. So processes, um, verifying functionality, that can be automated through a UI. Super, you went through those shapes like an absolute boss, Dermot. Thank you for that. <laughs> so here we have some of our challenges with test automation. So of course, there's a reason why 100% of people aren't doing it already, because there are some challenges, but the, usually the benefit is worth the challenge. So here's what we saw from a survey that we conducted last year. So one of the challenges with, I think it's 15% of people found that the delivery methodology, their own delivery methodology didn't support automation. Other respondents said that the project they are tested, testing could not be tested with automation. 12% of respondents said that they had the lack of appropriate tool sets. And a massive 41% said it's a lack of personnel with skills in test automation. So that's an interesting one because nobody is born a test automator. I mean, everyone has some kind of a learning curve. So I think organizations need to understand that and embrace it and just give their employees time. You can't exactly hire in someone with 10 years experience of test automation because it just didn't exist. So yeah, I, I can understand why that's such a big answer, but hopefully they can see and organizations, organizations can see that that challenge could easily be overcome by just allowing adequate time for, for people to bridge that learning curve. And then 17% of respondents said they're struggling to determine what to automate versus what to leave manual. And I guess my tidbit to that would be automate anything that you can <laughs> or what makes sense. You know, certain things make sense to, it depends on your own application. But again, just try and automate what you can. So these are the challenges. How can you overcome this? through developing your skills, your automation skills. Again, that just comes with time and practice and research and working with the team. You also need to likely invest in an automation tool. So you can, of course, manually script this, but there's a lot of work that goes into that. Then if you have someone on your team who leaves, maybe then it's very difficult for someone to take over because you don't know what kind of approach they've taken in their script automation. Whereas with the tool, it's much more structured. And of course, then identify repetitive and monotonous tasks to automate. So they would be kind of the three starter points that we've listed here. So there are the challenges. We've also said how we can overcome the challenges. And then again, the benefits of test automation specifically is the ability to confirm the health of your application, give you that confidence that you can deploy this release and know that your end users will not experience any unexpected errors. Secondly here, expanding your test coverage. So obviously when you automate your tests, you're giving yourself a lot more bandwidth to test other areas. So often when you're squeezed for time, you'll just test the necessities. And if you're manually doing that, it, it narrows what you can test because your time is running out. So automation obviously increases your test coverage. And finally, the ability to detect bugs because the more tests you can run and the quicker you can run them, the faster you'll find bugs and the more chance you're going to find a bug because as you expand your test coverage, you're going to expand your area of the possibility of finding bugs and defects. So here's another just takeaway from what we've seen year on year. So this is from our state of testing survey in 2018. So as you can see in 2017 on the blue here, we said what percentage of your tests are automated? 
So automated API testing grew from 49% to 54%. Automated performance testing grew from 50% to 54%. Oh, and that, that was it. So you can see here, there is a trend that we're starting to see people are more and more embracing automated testing. It's slow, but we are getting there. Um, it just says here only 5% of survey respondents reported automating 0% of their tests. So you can see that we're getting more and more on, on board with test automation and we're seeing that with our customers and in the industry. So just to give you an insight in case you're wondering, oh, what am I doing versus what the rest of the world is doing? This gives you a good idea of where our industry is at and the trend that we've seen over the last two years. Okay, so we're going to do introduction to test automation and test management. So I'm gonna skip through this poll considering we were so efficient, we did it already. And um, Dermot, I don't know if you wanna take this slide. This is our test management tooling slide. Would you like Absolutely. to go ahead? Absolutely, yes, I would love to. So basically, um, when we're looking at, again, the, the state of testing survey from last year, uh, we were asking people what tools they were going to be using for their test management. Um, now, <laughs> back in the dark ages, I, <laughs> I don't want to reflect on how long I've been in this industry, but certainly when I started out, people were uh, planning and managing their tests using spreadsheets. And that persisted right, for me anyway, right up until I was in uh, I would say it was 2016 actually was the last time I used a spreadsheet or I had to use a spreadsheet to manage my tests. Um, more and more we start to see people using um, tools that are specifically for management and test management in, in uh, specifically um, and by far and away the most uh, popular one among our respondents is JIRA. So JIRA just seems to be everywhere um, certainly every time we have a demo, people are looking for how we integrate with JIRA, how we can report information to JIRA, how we can create issues and tickets in JIRA from the test tool itself. Um, and you can see that reflected in the respondents there. Nearly 60% of respondents um, using test tools that are integrated with JIRA. And then the last one there is 40% of respondents um, are using some kind of bespoke tool. So that's obviously developed internally or developed you know, by contract specifically to their needs. The drawback there obviously is, is one of um, support. So a bespoke tool needs to have um, a resource of, of knowledge within the company and you just won't have that knowledge outside of the company. So um, I've seen it myself where we had testing tools um, and only a small handful of people knew about it. They all left the company and then nobody knew about the test tool. Um, and so the use of the test tool just nosedived. So that's something you have to be aware of with bespoke tools. Whereas using kind of off the shelf technologies or open source technologies, you have a better chance of having knowledge um, in new candidates and knowledge outside of the, the company you're working in. Yeah, no, absolutely, Dermot. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the story when it comes to test management tooling. Um, here we have some of our benefits of test automation and test management. So here there's just some stats. Again, this is from our survey and this is a, in the big shiny orange star. And I, my director presented this slide before and the way he did it was in a very comical. I won't do justice, but anyway, those who invested in it, do you want to go for it, Dennis? I don't mind. <laughs> he, he, our director is uh, has a background in musical theatre. That's why everything he he decides to put emphasis on ends up being very emphatic. Um, so will I go for it, Dennis? Okay. <laughs> Those who invested in a test management tool automated more for every type of testing than those using spreadsheets only. Excellent. You did a fantastic job. Um, <laughs> I hope that resonated. I do think I listen more when it's said in a voice like that. So <laughs> well I should done. do all my webinars in that voice then. Absolutely. Okay, you can see then on the right here some of those stats uh, where the standalone tool versus spreadsheets only. Um, so again, just trying to give you an idea of what's happening and what we're seeing from our customers and, and in the industry.
So I'm going to jump ahead now because I know we're coming to the second half of our webinar and Dermot and I are dying to show you actual tools and how we can do the integrations between the tools. So really quickly, we here have an, it is a very important section. So there's no point improving all your testing without having the metrics and the reporting to analyze and to prove it. So essentially here, we're just highlighting that software testing metric is a quantitative measure that helps estimate the progress, the quality, and the health of your software testing effort. So we do recommend that you have this as a priority in your testing process. So there's various types of test metrics here. Obviously, there's your process metrics, your product metrics, and your project metrics. And I'm gonna jump right in and say why these are critical to your testing strategy. So it gives you the ability to assess the project progress in line with your release goals. Again, there's no point just implementing automation and going hell for leather and not measuring how it's impacting your kind of releases and your deliverables. Second one here, clearly identify the areas and type of improvement needed. So again, with your metrics, you can clearly do that. It allows you to make informed decisions regarding your priority and your changes, and there will always be changes as we know. Test metrics also allow you to track your software defects and prioritize them better. So if you're having maybe, you're struggling with your resources, you need to realign or reprioritize your defects, then you can easily track them using your test metrics. It also improves cost efficiency by streamlining your process and allows you to get deeper insights to refine plans for future release activities. And I think the most important ones for me are just the ability to make informed decisions and assess your, project, your progress. Absolutely. There was an old truism that we uh, held to when I worked in Sun Microsystems. It was kind of a, a part of the corporate culture, which was uh, that which is me measured improves. Um, and nice. The origin, which I, I don't know exactly, but it was everywhere in Sun. Um, and it, it certainly came across all of the testing organization when we were there. And it, you know, it, it applies everywhere, basically. If you don't know um, how you're doing, you've no way of improving it. Exactly. No, that's a great, that's a great saying. Um, so then the other important part of that is why reporting is critical to your testing strategy. So similar benefits, it allows you to track coverage, your defects, quality of your software. It allows you to monitor the progress on your projects and releases. It also gives everyone end-to-end -end visibility of the software development lifecycle. So naturally, you have your developers and your testers testing, but there are people who don't test that need to understand how you're doing, what the progress is, and if there's anything at risk. So providing that visibility is crucial. Again, you're getting real-time insights so that you can make decisions and take action immediately. You're given the information needed to make quality and release decisions. And of course, as I said, just being able to share these findings and insights with the various stakeholders in your team and in your organization. Okay, so here's a quick sneak peek of what we're going to take you through. So for the last 25 minutes, Dermot's going to give you a quick introduction to Test Complete, which is our UI testing tool, and also SOAP UI, which is the API testing tool. And then I'm going to show you how Test Complete and Zephyr for Jira integrate. So rather than reading the slides, Dermot, I think we should just jump in because I think it's going to take a bit of time to um, to show this, yeah. So yep. this is just a high level overview that Test Complete is used for automating your web, mobile, and desktop UI applications. Dermot's gonna show you that. Then we have SOAP UI Pro, which is our tool for automating testing for your REST and your SOAP APIs. So even though the name is SOAP, it actually caters for both REST and SOAP APIs. And, and you're way, way more as well. So we've recently incorporated GraphQL and there's just a variety of different types of APIs that it supports. Yeah, and just allows you to obviously automate your tests and do codeless and data drive your test. And again, Jeremy's gonna take us through a quick run through of that. And then we have Zephyr and this is essentially a test case management tool. It allows you to organize your releases, manage your test cases, assign resources, create cycles, all of that good stuff and also link it to your various defects, your requirements and your test cases and have traceability amongst all of those together. So there's a lot here. We're not going to be able to jump into the detail, but we're just trying to give you that high level view of what is possible with these various tools. So my next slide says 
let's check it out. So Dermot, whenever you're ready, I'll stop sharing and you can reveal the beautiful test complete. Okay. Um, Ta-da! Ta-da, indeed. So can you all see my screen or? I can see your screen. Let me just check the chat to see if we have confirmation from others. Yes, Nez, Dan, Santosh, Kishore, Zuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a lot of yeses. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at here is test complete. I'm just going to give a, a bit of an overview of, of what test complete is capable of from an automation standpoint. Um, so we're looking at the main interface, and when it comes to automating your tests, it's usually simply a matter of uh, creating a keyword test. Um, and then from that point, we have the ability to record an interaction with any application we choose. So once we're recording here, you can see the record panel is open. That's so pure in the background. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, here's my web application. And I'm just going to perform a quick login. Uh, make sure I spell everything right. Oh, pressure's on now, Dermot. I know. I'm being observed, so everything's going to go wrong. No, um, <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> so we're, we in. we're in. Um, from here, we could validate that process, so we could add a checkpoint. Uh, using object properties, and that's leveraging Test Complete's object recognition engine. So as I drag my mouse over here, you'll see that Test Complete has recognized discrete objects in my application and is able to identify them and interact with them, and as we can see, checkpoint them. Okay, so once we've identified the item, we can choose a property that we want to examine, and we can set that as our criterion. Okay. For objects that we can't easily get a property from, we have the OCR functionality, which allows us to pull text out of any given object and use that uh, as a pattern for verifying uh, the object that we've specified. Now, hopefully my network isn't, ah, there we go. So I could specify any of these substrings and use that as a validation uh, string for my object. But mostly we'll go with property, and once I finish that, and I can log out, close my browser, and we can stop the test. And once we've done that, Test Complete compiles all of the operations that I've just performed um, into a keyword test that we can execute and repeat. So a lot of our customers who are moving from manual, maybe they're following the spreadsheet paradigm, um, so they've laid out all of their test steps in a cell in a spreadsheet. So what they could do is fire up test complete, switch on record, run through their, um, their process as written in the spreadsheet, and then stop the recording. And then forever after that particular process has been automated and can be executed whenever and however they want. Okay. So we have some extra clicks we don't need here. I'm just going to remove those to make it neater. And <clears throat> whoop. can you still see my screen? Yeah, all good. Awesome. OK, so what we can do then once we have a test case is we can select a certain amount of these uh, test steps. And what I've automated here is the login process, but obviously that's a single login. What, I would probably want to throw a variety of different types of login at this process to test it further, expand our test coverage, make sure that we're handling our boundary cases. So the way we would do that is by using data-driven testing. So I simply right-click and select make data loop here. And that allows me to create a data uh, variable to hold the information we're going to use. I can decide where that information comes from so I can uh, create a table within Test Complete to contain the login details that I want, or we could pull it from a database. So that might be more conducive for complex data sets, or we can pull it from a file. And I'm going to use a CSV file here. And it's a very straightforward, comma-separated 
uh, value file here, as you can see. I'm going to limit the records to two. And then we can attach columns from our data source to the on-screen objects. So here we've got password, which is automatically selected because the column header matches the on-screen identifier. But I'm going to use login here. And then if you remember, my validation was based on that string. I can actually use my data source as well for that. So once we completed that, we've got a new loop structure in here, which is using variables from my data source. So if I were to run that now, it'll pop open my application and perform the login. Rather than using my own login, it will use login details from my data source. And Dermot, just to note, like one of my favorite things about Test Complete is the ability to do these advanced features using wizards. So you do not need exactly. technical expertise. You can just, any, most users can just go in. We have instructions for all of these features online and they can work through the steps and overcome their challenge. And it just means that you don't have to have like a highly skilled developer running tests. Exactly. So, once we run our tests, you can see the checkpoints are available here. They're marked in green. Um, I had a, something to do with Zoom there was getting in the way, so I had to cancel the test early. But um, basically, we report in this fashion. For every other step, we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of what we recorded, and which translates to what we expected, and what we actually encountered on the test. Okay. So we can increase the size of that and we can view what exactly happened. So here you can see we're using my login and then over here we're using the login from my data source. Now that's just data-driven looping. For web tests, we can also use browser looping. For mobile tests, we can use device looping where you can loop over uh, emulated or physically attached devices um, to run your tests in sequence. Um, and we also have the ability to take these keyword tests. So this is a codeless uh, keyword test, which uh, means that you know it, you can look at it, you can see what is, what's happening. You don't actually have to know a scripting language in order to um, to create it or to maintain it. But if you, for whatever reason, you wanted to expand that tests capabilities programmatically or you wanted to add additional libraries or data structures, you could just right click on that keyword test and convert it to a script. So create a new unit. And that just renders out as, in this case, beautifully formatted JavaScript, but we support a variety of scripting languages in test complete. Okay. And then Finally, when we're looking at um, organizing our tests and running our tests, if we go to the top level of our project, we can create uh, groups. So I can call this whatever I want, webinar group. And adding test items to this execution group is simply a matter of dragging and dropping into that item. And so these test items would be executed in sequence, sequence, and we can tweak the parameters and the conditions of running this particular test case, these particular test cases on a test case by test case basis. Now that could be run from within the ID or it can be run from the command line. So it can integrate into any CI CD pipeline uh, that you might think of. For Jenkins, which is probably the most popular CI CD tool, there is an actual plugin for running test complete tests. Brilliant, Dermot. Um, I know that was like a really quick <laughs> high-level version, but I think you showed kind of the real value there and just being able to record and replay your tests and then edit them after the fact and data drive them and integrate Absolutely. them with other tools. Like, I love Test Complete. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we only have around 15 minutes for the rest of the webinar, so I think we might have to jump into SOAP UI. And yep. then I'll, uh, if I just need maybe seven minutes at the end to run through my little section. Okay, no problem. So SOAP UI is, as we said, it's a tool for testing a variety of different APIs, not just SOAP, SOAP and REST and uh, uh, database connections, GraphQL, a variety of different uh, Java-based interfaces. You can test them all from SOAP UI. 
you have the projects interface which allows you to create a brand new project and you can create that from a specific rest url you could pull an api definition so whether it's a whistle or a waddle or an open api definition that you pull from swagger you can design your um uh, ready API project from any of these sources. You can use REST discovery. So basically, SOAP UI uh, sits in and examines interactions with uh, a REST API that you're interacting with live using either the built-in browser or your own uh, application browser. Or you can just define an empty project and specify the, uh, the attributes you're going to use as you go. Okay. So here's a project that I have made from an open API uh, definition and basically what that does is that based on the definition it goes and it builds out a variety of different test cases so we've got uh, test cases based on the endpoints that are supported within our application now we can go into the SOAP UI Pro tool to actually examine these requests <clears throat> so we can edit the request itself and we can edit the parameters that we're going to use to execute this test so I'll just go up here to this uh, get request. So what I've done is I've specified a few ver um, details here. So we've got order ID, <coughs> excuse me. And I've also set up an assertion down here. So that's just basically a valid HTTP status. So if I were to execute this, uh, that runs against my, <clears throat> my application's endpoint, and it returns the information that I was looking for. In this case, order ID it corresponds with the next box, okay? So that's a very straightforward way from <clears throat> uh, an API definition, an open API definition straight into an automatically generated test, a set of test cases that you can uh, modify to your requirements and execute. Now, SOAP UI also supports um, advanced functions in a very straightforward manner, such as data-driven testing, similar to what we saw in Test Complete. And it also allows you to take uh, these particular test cases and you can pass them on to other tools within the Ready API suite, like Load UI Pro, Service V Pro, or you can create uh, Secure Pro security tests from these requests as well. Okay. Uh, in terms of reporting, Ready API will generate reports on the tests that you run, um, including uh, generating a LU reports from the tests that you've uh, performed. And it also integrates with CI CD tools. Um, we have a Jenkins plugin similar to Test Complete. And also, you can execute these tests from the command line in the same fashion. So, whatever your CI CD tool, you should be able to execute tests in either Ready API or Test Complete. Okay. Awesome, Jermis. I, I know we have so little time. There's so much more to show, but I hope. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I hope people get the idea. Um, again, SOAP UI Pro can be used by non-technical users. Um, it's really easy to get up and started. You can start testing your APIs immediately without, like, even without having to create a project. You can just do a ping and check if it's it's running and giving you a response. So it's really really easy tool to get up and running with. Um, so yeah, and I just want to mention if you haven't used any of these tools, we do have free trials available on our website for all of our tools. So if you're looking to get your hands on and just wet your feet a bit, please just go to our website and you can download a trial there. Again, we also have loads of documentation and videos on how to use the tools. So don't be afraid to just try and work through some. We have a lot of tutorials and things like that. So yeah, just if you have a bit of time, get stuck in. So I think then, Dermot, I'm going to start sharing again. So I'm going to cool. stop you sharing. Do you want? Yes, I want to continue. Okay, super. Let's check it out. Okay, so can everyone see my screen now? I don't know where my chat box is gone. I can see okay. it. And Wonderful. we're getting yeses coming through as well. Yeah. I love that. It's like dead silent and then... <laughs> I don't know why that makes me happy. But okay, let's get out of my deck here and I'm going to 
show you how Test Complete can work with Zephyr for Jira. So I'm going to show you how you can link your automated tests in Test Complete to your manual tests that you have defined in your Zephyr for Jira. And just to take a step back again, so Zephyr is our test management solution. And in Zephyr, either Zephyr for Jira or Zephyr Standalone, you can create test cases, you can organize your releases, you can assign your requirements to your test cases, you can assign and create cycles and releases and then assign resources to those cycles. And then you have all of this in one central location and you can also include your automated test results, which I'm gonna show you now and have metrics on all of this in one central location. So again, we went through the slide earlier on the benefits of having a test management solution. So hopefully you can see the value in it. And I'll just give you a quick look at how the integration for Zephyr for Jira is working with Test Complete. And again, Zephyr for Jira is the plugin in Jira. So here I have, I'm gonna open my Jira actually first. So I think you're all familiar with Jira. We had a lot of Jira users. Um, here in this tab, I have Zephyr for Jira gave, basically gives you the ability to report on your metrics, give summaries, give traceability. You can also plan your various cycles, manage your executions, execute tests, search tests. So there's just a couple of features in there that just give you that more advanced management ability. So here I have a sample shopping cart login, and this is just a manual test where I said I want to log into my shopping cart, enter my credentials and verify that I can view a product on the shopping page. So rather than just manually doing this, I can go to my test complete. I can record these steps, which I've done here. So Dermot already showed you what a keyword test looks like. This is just a simple login through my shopping cart. And then imagine you want to associate this to your test case and your test in Zephyr for Jira. So to do this, you can just go to the project level of your project, navigate to the property. So, excuse me, my voice is breaking. <laughs> right, I'm back. So this is your default view. So you do need to navigate to your properties and then navigate to Zephyr for Jira. And at the top of your screen here, you will see if you haven't yet connected, it will say connect to Zephyr for Jira. So just up here. And this is all in the latest release of Test Complete. So if you have Test Complete, make sure you do the upgrade. And then it's very simple and straightforward. You just specify whether you want to connect to your Jira cloud or Jira server. You then specify your credentials. If you have an API token or password, you then need your Zephyr access keys. And these are available in the importer section in your Jira. So you just navigate to importer and you will be given these two keys and this is where you input them. And then once you have all your credentials, you can test your connection to ensure that it can correctly connect. Yes, it can, so that's good to know. And once you've done that, then you can actually select which project you want to work for. So this will connect to your Jira and then you specify which one you want to work with, which version and which cycle and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to rock. So once you have that set up, you can just navigate your test items here. And when you're at this level, it's as simple as just dragging and dropping the test that you want to put in here. And then here you'll see to the right, we have link to external test case. So imagine this is now the external Zephyr for Jira test case. And again, really easy to use. You just click on the field, you'll get an option then of the available tests based on the project that you selected when you were doing the connection. So imagine I select that. I've already done one here in the essence of time. So I've selected my GAL 761, which is this one here. So actually I'm gonna show you, just imagine then you run this test, you get your test results here. So this has passed, but the main and the magic is we want Zephyr for Jira to know that this test has passed. So once you run a test complete, works with the connection in Zephyr for Jira, and then you can go into your test and you'll see the pass and fail history of your test execution. So here you can see it passed and in what cycle. So these tests, I think Dermot did one a few days ago, I did one this morning. It shows you who executed it, when it was executed on, and gives you a couple of options there. So again, it just means that if you're managing all of your defects in your tests in Jira, that you can easily work with tools such as Test Complete to feed those results in, in an automatic way. Okay, so that was again, really high level, really quick, but just to give you an idea of the 
possible solutions that you can put together using the various tool sets. Um, I really, really hope that this has been helpful. It's been a lot. Like I understand that a lot of this may have went over a lot of people's heads. There may be a fell asleep halfway through. That's completely fine. Good news is we have a recording. Better news is we have documentation videos doing all of these steps so that you will always have access to this information. Dermot and I will end the call today, but you'll still have access to the information and the video. So do not fear. Um, okay, so I think that's essentially the end of our presentation. So Dermot, I don't know if we have any questions. We've had a few. Um, <clears throat> It is the top, what time are we? 10.56. Could we pick yeah. maybe two or three there that we could get through? Uh, yeah, there's a few that we can ask. So we've got a question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, is it possible to use regular expressions while using OCR checkpoints in test complete? Um, it's possible to use regular expressions when you're using the OCR methodology in a scripted environment. Um, in the uh, codeless keyword test, I'm not sure about that, uh, but it's certainly something that we have documented extensively on the website. So if you look for test complete documentation on the SmartBear website, uh, the OCR checkpoints and the OCR objects are fully documented there. Uh, okay, super. Thanks for that. And then I see we have a question from Navita. So does it work on any application which is built on any environment? So for each product, we have a set of supported frameworks, languages, and environments. So I guess we, we need to know more detail about what you're looking for it to work on. Um, but again, on our website, we have all of the extensive list of what we support. And we, like I said, we're always trying to grow and make sure we support the majority of our customer base. So it's a good chance whatever you're working with will be supported. Okay. Um, is it a paid tool or open source is another question. So for test complete, it is a paid for tool. For SOAP UI Pro, it is a paid for tool. However, there is also SOAP UI, which is open source. So it's a similar tool. It's used for testing your APIs. However, it's a much more kind of manual effort. So you need to script everything you need to do. Whereas with SOAP UI Pro, a lot of the advanced testing features are built in through wizards or steps that you can just drag and drop. So it depends on your needs and how much time you have to spend using the open source tool and working manually, I guess. Um, and then thirdly, Zephyr for Jira and Zephyr standalone are both paid for tools as well. Okay. Cool. Um, we've got a question from Nitesh. Is it possible to do UI automation like on Windows Explorer view and on all items and objects in the Explorer view? So Test Complete supports desktop testing. Um, with specific applications, it's better if they are compiled with debug information enabled. But you can do some interaction with system level uh, tools uh, to a certain extent, possibly finding out the uh, the properties are deriving information from the properties of the system level tools may be more difficult. But, but the best thing is basically to download the trial, try it out with your own particular use case and see how you go. And as part of the trial, you have access to um, our, our sales team who are able to liaise with us, the product engineers, um, and we'd be happy to get on a call with you if it's uh, an issue for you integrating the product. Great. Okay. So it's 11 on the dot. I think we can call that a success. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for attending today. I hope it was insightful and it was help you, helpful and it gives you a good understanding of where you can start with your automation and how you can work with the various tool sets. Dermot, any last words for our great attendees? Uh, thank you for coming. We appreciate yeah. all of your questions and all of your um, your attendance basically um we do this for you guys so it's always great when you uh show up in such great numbers uh it's um great to see uh people engaging with us and getting information from you about how maybe we can improve our products and our presentations
exactly yeah so thank you all so much for your time pleasure working with you today and getting all your feedback and we'll see you in the not too distant future no doubt thank, thank you, you everyone going to close bye the bye. meeting now have a great day and weekend